Hello everyone, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training. Thank you for joining me today. In today's module we'll be looking at frack kits, infill drilling, and protection fracks. Before we get started, I do want to remind you about the website, uogtraining.com. On the website you can catch up for previous uh, catch up on previous blogs and also if you're enjoying the blog and uh, would like to receive an email every time a new one is released you can sign up there under the email communications tab. Uh, also before we get started if you're not familiar with uh, refracturing you can go back and uh, under the blog tab and watch refracturing options for existing wells before proceeding with this video. So frack kits. What are frack kits? Uh, this has become a very big topic in the industry. Now what we're looking at here, this is three horizontal wells and they're spaced relatively closely together. So this is an aerial view. So if you were standing on surface, you look straight down, this would be the horizontal laterals. So uh, imagine yourself looking straight down. You have the capability to look 7 to 15,000 feet in the ground. Uh, and this would be your three horizontal laterals here. Now a frack kit is when during the frack job, you start communicating with other wells. Maybe you've hit a large swarm of natural fractures, uh, of small natural fractures, and it just allows the, the fracture from one well to communicate into another well. Now, there is a scenario where infill drilling really increases the odds of you um, having frack hits occur. So we'll start here with the one well. We, uh, we fracture it like you normally would in the horizontal. <coughs> and um, as you produce the well, it depletes the pressure around that well bore. Now in most current practices, once uh, operators have drilled that first well, they've drilled it to hold the land. Then they go ahead, they move their drilling rig onto another location, and they continue drilling to hold the land. Uh, once they've held the land, they can take their time as they come back uh, and uh, do other wells later. So that's what infill drilling is. We've got our primary well, the original well, and then you come in and you drill wells nearby once they've uh, finished their drill to hold the land. So the original well, that's going to be known as the parent well, and any wells drilled nearby at a later date, that's going to be the child wells. <clears throat> now the problem is, is when you go and fracture these child wells, You've produced that parent well, and if you produced it long enough and your reservoir pressure is depleted, then you create a natural path of least resistance for the child wells. So once you go to fracture the child wells, you have a much higher chance of the frack job catching uh, in that depleted reservoir and going to the path of least resistance. Now there's two problems there. If this is a productive parent well, and you're pumping all this water and sand into it, and it doesn't have the reservoir pressure to come back to life, because of that uh, depletion from production, then you may kill the production from that parent well. The other problem is the child wells themselves, because now your original frack plan, you wanted a frack job to look something like this. This is the contact area you're seeking. But every uh, stage that did not uh, fracture as intended, then you've potentially lost production from those. So not only are you potentially killing your parent well, you're also not getting the intended frag job you wanted to in the child well, which uh, in turn can result in poor production in the child wells. And that's where protection fracks come into play. This is a relatively new concept. Uh, operators are still very much in the experimental phase as far as what works and what doesn't work, but uh, this is one of the more common scenarios that I've heard of operators doing and having at least moderate success with it. So we've got our parent well here, our depleted reservoir around it. You come back in, you drill your child wells. But before you fracture your child wells, they go in and do a protection frack. Now, it's technically considered a refract just because it's a re-entry and you're refracturing. However, the objectives here are very different. Oftentimes, this is a very slow uh, pumping of, of water just for a couple of days. And then they shut the well in uh, to protect it. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to rebuild that pressure. They're trying to get back to critical stress levels and eliminate that path of least resistance in the child wells. So hopefully, if it works properly anyway, your child wells go back to the original frag design and get that in initial distribution that you were hoping for in the first place. 
Now it is possible also to do a true refract as a protection frac. Um, if you go back to the refracturing module that I referenced earlier, it, it, you'll know that uh, there are some variabilities and some unknowns in refracturing uh, as far as uh, even distribution of your refract. So, uh, but if an operator does feel comfortable that they do get a refract that looks something like this, where it's relatively distributed uh, evenly, then they can also do a primary refracture uh, and rebuild that pressure and uh, then shut it in and do the frac job on the child wells. And once again, it's the same theory. It's a refract job that serves as a protection frac. So it helps prevent, it helps re-stimulate the parent well while preventing production loss and then uh, creates the, uh, the pressure balance that you really want so that you get a good frac job through your child wells as well. Well, that's the end of today's module. Thank you for joining me uh, once again. This is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training. All of my contact information is here if you have any questions. Uh, and also, please feel free to uh, post any questions in the, uh, the social media that you're viewing it on right now. Thank you again. Have a great day.